Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, it seems we are never quite so eloquent as when we are decrying the crimes of a past generation, uh, while remaining oftentimes as staggering blind as some of our most intellectually sightless predecessors when it comes to facing and rejecting atrocities in our own time. Uh, whether it was slavery or the many human genocides across history, the patterns were the same. Innocent human beings, children of God all, were systematically dehumanized and then subjected to the most horrifying inhumanity. All the while, human society as a whole hardened their hearts and turned away. But Mr. Chairman, truth and time travel on the same road. And though it was often agonizingly slow, the truth of these tragic inhumanities in our past began to dawn on people of reason and goodwill. Their hearts first, and then their minds began to change. Now, I've often asked myself, Mr. Chairman, what was it that changed their minds? What changed the minds of those who had previously embraced a, an invincible ignorance to hide from themselves the horror of what was happening to their innocent fellow human beings? I so wish I knew that, Mr. Chairman, because you see, today such a con conundrum looms before humanity again. The most glaring recent example of which are the gut-wrenching revelations surrounding the trial and conviction in Philadelphia of Dr. Kermit Gosnell. In the words of the grand jury report, uh, Gosnell had a simple solution for unwan unwanted babies. He killed them. He didn't call it that. He called it ensuring fetal demise. The way he ensured fetal demise was by sticking scissors in the back of the baby's neck and cutting the spinal cord. He called that snipping. Over the years, there were hundreds of snippings. When authorities entered the clinic of Dr. Gosnell, they found a torture chamber for little babies that I do not have the words or the stomach to adequately describe. Suffice it to say, Dr. Gosnell ran a systematic practice in his late-term abortion clinic to cut spines of those babies who had survived his attempt to abort them. Ashley Baldwin, one of the employees of Dr. Gosnell, said she saw babies breathing and she described one as two feet long that no longer had eyes or a mouth. But in her words, was making like this, quote, screeching noise. And it, quote, sounded like a little alien. And I, for God's sake, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if this is really who we are. If Dr. Gosnell had killed the children, he now stands convicted of murdering before they had passed through the birth canal only a few moments earlier. It would have all been perfectly legal in many of the United States of America. Mr. Chairman, more than 325 late-term babies were torturously killed without anesthesia in America just yesterday. Many of them cried and screamed as they died, but because it was amniotic fluid going over the vocal cords instead of air, we couldn't hear them. All of them had at least four things in common. First, they were just, they were just little babies who had done nothing wrong to anyone on earth. And each one of them died a nameless, lonely, and torturous death. And each one of their mothers was callously abandoned to deal with the emotional results that will inevitably follow. And all the gifts that these children might have brought to humanity are lost forever. So if there's one thing that we must not miss about this unspeakably evil episode, it is that Kermit Gosnell is not an anomaly. He is the face of this murderous Fortune 500 enterprise of killing helpless unborn children in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Given the cataclysmic implications for any society who turns a blind eye to such atrocities against the most innocent and helpless of its members, would it be too much to hope for, Mr. Chairman, that members of this body and Americans in general might research these tragedies and learn the truth for themselves. Because you see, Mr. Chairman, as we debate here today the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act, the real question before us is not whether these unborn children entering their sixth month of gestation are capable of feeling pain. The real question is, are we? Mr. Chairman, if our society is to survive with our humanity intact, our moral impulse toward our fellow human beings must first survive. 
And that's why it's so important for people to see for themselves the, the humanity of these little victims and the inhumanity of what is being done to them. Now, maybe it wouldn't change everyone's mind, but it has changed so many minds. And most of these changed minds share a common thread. They were confronted with the brutal reality of abortion, and something inside them could no longer deny the truth or condone the murder of a defenseless child. And I would never suggest that I clearly understand what sparked that change in their hearts. But I am convinced that it is the same spark in the human soul that has turned the tide of blood and tragedy and hatred and inhumanity throughout history. Whatever it is, Mr. Chairman, it is mankind's only hope. And I yield back.